A saucy tale. The clatter of coffee and teacups and the hum of conversation was around the breakfast room, where sausages, bacon, black pudding and scrambled eggs were tonged and spooned onto groaning plates. Arnold and Olivia were due to set off after breakfast, having stayed the last two nights in the Smithson Country Hotel, which had looked a lot nicer on the website. The wedding party that caused him to put in his earplugs as guests banged doors and chatted loudly at three last night made him tired and hungry. Olivia could sleep through almost anything, it seemed, and she had opted for muesli and yoghurt. Arnold was no exception to the temptations of the fried delights on display. He returned to his table with a laden plate, expelling his (coughs) customary groan squeezing into a seat and reaching for his coffee cup. He tore open sachet after sachet of ketchup, covering his bacon and sausages. Olivia was flicking through her notebook. I think we can make it to Inverness in about three hours, but we can stop for tea on the way. There should be some nice walks at Cairngorms National Park if we want to stretch it out for a bit. No rush, given your birthday is still a day away. Reaching across to take hold of his hand, So I'm not 50 yet then, smiling at her as he stopped his chewing. We are going to cut back on this when we get back. You're going on a diet and exercise plan, my man. The chatter was interrupted by a loud voice. How hard can it be to get me more ketchup? A woman fumed at the hapless staffer behind the buffet counter. My my, my colleague is looking in the storeroom. We appear to have run out. I'm very sorry, madame. She flounced off, glaring hotly at Arnold as he chewed on a sausage, preparing to butter another slice of toast. Close your mouth when you're chewing! I can't take you anywhere, Arnold! hissed Olivia. He grimaced at being talked to like that, and it reminded him of the school canteen, where Mrs Murray stalked the tables on her lunchtime hunt for manor infringements. In the last couple of years, eating had literally been a comfort after he's lost his HGV license due to a drink driving conviction. All interest in working out and eating within reasonable limits had collapsed. Fortunately, he had recently found work as a handyman for a local landlord. He prepared vacated rooms for new tenants and dealt with any snagging issues in the portfolio of houses he rented out. His boss seemed like the usual unscrupulous landlord, but he treated Arnold well. He needed someone reliable, so wasn't going to put his nose out of joint. This was his first sense of empowerment in a long time. So whilst he wasn't going to let it go to his head, he did relish it. In another year, he would be eligible to reapply for his HGV license. Getting back behind the wheel of a huge truck was all he wanted to do since he was a schoolboy. There was nothing quite like pulling into a motorway service station that was reserved for trucks and filling up the massive tanks with diesel. He'd even come to enjoy the smell of it. He'd nod to other drivers and see them with their various trailers, guessing where they were bound for. For all the driving he'd done through Scotland, this had been the first time in decades he was travelling in a car that could be crushed by a truck. Hey you! came a strong Scottish accent that could have easily been Glaswegian. Arnold looked up to see where the voice was coming from. A man was addressing him with a jabbing finger from the table ahead of theirs. Did you have to use up all the ketchup? Arnold froze. He put down his fork and reached for his coffee cup again. It's up to the hotel to provide more, he muttered, looking away from the man. The man was sitting opposite the lady who had delivered her prior protestation at the hotel staffer. Her blown ponytail was pulled up high and she turned around to scowl at Arnold who had by now emptied his remaining sachet of ketchup on his fourth and final sausage. And he was going to enjoy that. Now it was the last they had in this hotel. Go easy on the sauce, big man, the angry boyfriend resumed. What's this 
bloody twit going to stop blithering on? Arnold couldn't help making the journey from his plate to his mouth with his ketchup drenched half sausage as slow motion as possible. Mmm, he groaned, enjoying the flavour a little too ostentatiously. Stop winding him up! Olivia pressing her hand on his. You're a real class act, you fat pig, shouted the bald and now red faced, overprotective boyfriend. I'll see you outside after I will, thrusting his finger again so that Arnold noticed tattoos on his knuckles. Just great, Olivia groaned, as other guests whose own conversations had ceased during this exchange of views looked both on and away. Arnold smiled at her to try and reassure her that nothing further was going to happen. The food wasn't so enjoyable with all of these onlookers now. Olivia agreed to get their overnight bags from the room, while Arnold went out to the car to fetch an umbrella for her. He breezed through the reception of the hotel, and, to his horror, the angry man stood up from a high-backed chair and started following him out the front doors towards the car park. Arnold's heart started racing. So, I said I'd see you afterwards, and here I am, big man. Enjoy your breakfast, did you? He squared up to Arnold next to a rather nice Audi A8 that looked brand new. He knew this was going to get ugly very quickly. So with his training, he knew it was best to get it over with rapidly. Without warning, Arnold punched him directly in the throat, immediately disabling him from causing further trouble. He lay on the wet ground, gasping for air. The bold, now decked man was going to be more shocked than hurt that a fat man could react so fast and accurately. Nor would he have anticipated that Arnold had learned this and much more as a Royal Marine Commander Reserve in his 20s.